This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Tamiya's much anticipated Tomcat, Zvezda's hulking T35, and Edward's hot new Spitfire. Welcome to New Product Rundown. I'm Aaron Skinner here with Elizabeth Nash to show you the latest, greatest kits. And we start with one of the most anticipated kits of the year, Tamiya's 148th scale F14A. It goes without saying that Grumman's big swing wing fighter is a hot subject for modelers. There have been a bazillion of these kits made since the Tomcat entered U.S. Navy service in the 1970s. Including Tamiya. Their 132nd scale F14 was the first kit reviewed by FSM that was in the fall 1982 charter issue by Larry Schramm. Who is still reviewing models for us today. So, what do you get in this kit released 10 years after the Tomcat left U.S. service? Let's take a look. Very fine recessed lines outline panels and hatches on the major airframe components. There are even finer rivets inside many panels. Part breakdown has the forward fuselage housing the cockpit split in half vertically. The rear section is split the other way to accommodate the wings. The terrific cockpit starts with a tub to which is added beautifully molded side consoles with buttons and switches. The sidewall inserts include panels and padding. The panels for the pilot and Rio look equally good. The rear panel includes a clear insert for the scope. Decals provide displays and the instructions show detailed color callouts. Decal placards decorate the two multi-part Martin Baker GRU-7A ejection seats which have very thin D-rings and face curtain pulls. Two-seated figure crew the aircraft. They include optional arms and decals for the helmet insignia. The wheel wells feature a ton of molded detail, including structural and mechanical elements. The gear legs themselves look terrific with invisible mold seams and clean actuators. The Tomcat's massive intakes are molded as single parts with clean lips. Inside, two-part trunks extend the lines to the front fans. The variable control intake ramps include molded structural details and actuators. Thanks to sturdy internal tabs, the wings will be movable from full sweep to full forward. These tabs mean the wings can be assembled and painted off the model, so no hard to reach spots. The mechanism is secured with screws, so it should be tough and stand up to handling. A really nice touch is the inclusion of optional wing glove seals and seats. They click on and off the model, so it'll be possible to realistically pose the aircraft with different wing configurations. Poly caps leave the horizontal stabilizers poseable. The exhaust looked terrific with deep cans and afterburner assemblies. Optional parts allow for either fully open or partially closed jet nozzles to be fitted. Or one of each, as is often seen on powered down Tomcats. Like the rest of the flying surfaces, the vertical tails have the trailing edge molded on one half. That makes them scale thin. The refueling probe can be posed open or closed. As can the canopy, which includes molded rivets on the frame. The windshield incorporates part of the forward fuselage, minimizing awkward filling and sanding. A set of masks is included. Optional pylons and fairings allow for different weapons to be hung under the plane. In addition to the AIM-54 Phoenix the Tomcat was designed to carry, the kit's ordnance includes AIM-9G-H Sidewinders and AIM-7E Sparrows. The instructions show typical loads for three types of mission. Decals provide stenciling for the weapons. As well as three aircraft. A VF-84 Jolly Rogers CAG Bird aboard USS Nimitz in 1979. Another U.S. Navy Tomcat from VF-2 Bounty Hunters on USS Enterprise in 1976. And a colorful camouflaged F-14 with the only other nation to use the aircraft, Iran, in 1980. There's a lot to like about Tamiya's new Tomcat. Smart engineering and terrific options should make it the top gun of F-14 kits. I feel the need. Our next kit today is the big 135th scale T-35 from Zvezda. Hulking and slow, the multi turreted tank was born of an idea that came and went before World War II started. Only 61 were built, but the dinosaur's size and battleship aesthetic make it perennially popular for modelers. Although the box art is similar to Hobby Boss's kit from a couple of years ago, this is a new tool model. The one-piece lower hull has weld seams, hatches, and suspension mounting points molded on. The upper hull includes the fenders. I really like the weld beads around the fender attachment straps. The eight complex suspension bogies comprise 11 parts each, including springs and wheels. Return rollers, drive sprockets, and idlers round out the running gear. The Lincoln length tracks incorporate sag on the upper run. Mild injector pin marks mar the inside of the runs. The T-35 suspension is boxed in and covered by unique skirts. Zvezda provides the external framing as single long pieces, and the skirts as individual panels. The main turret support builds from several plates. And the engine deck includes a fan under a louvered cover. Turrets, all five of them, make a T-35, so let's look at them starting with the smallest ones housing machine guns. The turret halves have rivets and open vision slots, and the roof hatch is separate. 
The same external features mark the larger 45 millimeter gun turret parts. A terrific looking mantlet houses a gun barrel made from three sections and featuring a hollow muzzle. The main turret shows weld seams on the halves and a distinctive cast star on the roof. The 76.2 millimeter gun has rifling in the muzzle and attaches to the mantlet with a recoil system and the breech and controls inside. There's more detail inside the turret, including the basket and seats, machine gun, radio, and more. Plenty to look at if you leave the separate hatches open. A wraparound antenna finishes the turret. Clear lenses are provided for the headlights on the glasses plate that can be folded away. Decals supply markings for two Red Army tanks. This is a big model. Almost a foot long. But Zvezda's kit should be a straightforward build. Next, we have Edward's 172nd scale Spitfire Mark 9C. Fans of Supermarine's beautiful fighter have been waiting for this kit ever since the Czech company announced it. And they won't be disappointed. In the box, it looks like a scaled down version of their 148 scale Spitfire. A true winner, and this one looks the same too. The surface detail is as good as it gets in 172nd scale. A combination of crisp recessed panel lines and rows of rivets. The Zeus fasteners on the cowl are slightly raised. We like the way that items that cross the center line seams are separate. No delicate sanding. There's some detail molded inside the fuselage for the cockpit. Which complements the separate walls, floor, framing, and seat. Optional instrument panels allow the modeler to either paint the dials or use the colored photo etched parts. PE also provides seat belts, seat armor, compass bracket, controls, intake grills, and more. Surface detail on the wings looks as good as the fuselage with rivets, panel lines, cannon bulges, and shell ejection ports. The ailerons and rudder are separate, but the elevators and flaps are molded in the neutral position. Optional short and tall rudders are provided. Optional upper cowls are also provided. Separate wheels fit into tires. Optional canopies allow the cockpit to be posed open or closed. The latter option requires a little surgery that is clearly indicated in the instructions. Pre-cut masks make painting a snap. Optional parts allow for bombs to be carried under the wings and a drop tank at the center line. Two styles of conformal fuel tanks are included. There's a lot of unused parts in the kit, including optional rear cockpit frames, exhausts, landing gear, gear doors. Chins, upper cowls, wing roots. Wheel, tail wheels, cannons. Ailerons, horizontal stabilizers. And wing tips. That and the sprue label that says it's for the Mark 8, 9, and 16 make it pretty clear more versions are inbound. Decals provide markings for the same six RAF spits as the 148th scale Mark 9C late version. There's some with D-Day stripes, some with nose art, and even a unique, mostly natural metal plane. Out of the box, this looks like a terrific model, but in keeping with Edward's form of late, there's extra detail to be had. Including photo etched wheel well doors, seat and seat bracket, radiator doors, bomb fins, and brackets. And PE flaps if you want to show them extended. From the brass in line, there are four Count them four sets of resin wheels. Five spoke with smooth tires. Five spoke with pattern tires. Four spoke wheels with smooth tires. And surprise, four spoke wheels with pattern tread. And two of the best cast, most petite exhaust sets we've seen. Rounded. And appropriate for this kit, the fishtail style. Finally, if you want more refined detail in the cockpit, there's a resin and PE replacement. With new walls, frames, pedals, seat, panel, and more. Looking at the parts, the options, and the quality of the moldings, it's not much of a stretch to say that this is the best 172nd scale Mark 9 on the market today. You'll get to see it built in a workbench review in an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler. You can also see reviews of the F-14 and T-35 there. And look for more new products in the October issue on sale now. And check out finescale.com for our expanded product review section with more details of books and decals. Thanks for visiting finescale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Desperately Seeking Susan. <laughs>